was very awe-inspiring when you saw him. He was monumental, grand in nature. His face was like a moon on Laylat al-Badr that had a light coming out of it like the moon on Laylat al-Badr. He was taller than a, a moderate build but not exceedingly tall because both are if you see somebody who's very tall it's strange amongst even tall people it seems strange if you see somebody short then also it's noticeable but he was of a middle stature inclining towards height because everything about him was middle everything even his physical description his color was a middle color he wasn't pasty white and he wasn't black he was a inclining toward light skin because of the racism in human beings. I mean that that's a re, one of the hikmah of that has to do with stupidity in human beings in distinguishing between people because of color. He inclined towards light but he wasn't pasty white. He was a color like the, what we call the harvest moon. And his hair was neither straight nor curly. It was wavy. It was middle. Everything about him was middle. He didn't speak slow and he didn't speak fast. He speaked in a moderate tone. His words were neither too short nor were they excessive, but they were always just right. When he spoke, people felt as if exactly the right amount of words were used. Everything about him was moderation. He had a full head and his, his hair was wavy. If he parted it, then it parted. It never went past the lobes of his ears if he allowed it to go long. Because sometimes he would cut it for ibadah, like the umrah or the hajj, when he shaved. But when he let it, it went to the lobes of his ears and in some riwayah, just above the shoulder. And then he was azhar alone, which azhar alone is not white and it's not dark. It's a light skin, what we would call in English a ruddy complexion. Wasi al Jabin. He had a large yeah. forehead, which in physiognomy traditionally was an indication yes. of high quality. And then his eyebrows, they were full, and there was a slight space between them. And then he had a vein on his forehead yes. that if he got upset, they could see the vein. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The upper part of his nose was aquiline so he had a beautiful nose that had a like a bridging yes. on the upper part and he had a light that came from that area of his uh, his face that was clearly yes. discernible yes. he had a full beard and his eyes were very dark he had a high, beautiful cheek. He had a, a mouth that was full, so that when he spoke, he was, his pronunciation was perfect. Ashnab, Mufallaj. His teeth were beautiful. There was slight space in the teeth. Daqiq al Masruba. He had a light hair on his chest, which was manliness without having a lot of uh, hair. His neck was like a gazelle's neck. He had a beautiful neck and a high neck. And it was like a gazelle's neck. It had like a, a beautiful, like a silvery clarity to it. He was balanced in all of his outward aspects. Badinan, he had a strong build. Mutamasikan, and it was all perfectly formed. His stomach and his chest were equal. He never had a large stomach. He had no paunch. Even when he was in his uh, 60s, his stomach was always flat. He was full chested and his shoulders were broad and he had a large bone. Also his trachea where it met there there was space. And then he had a light hair also on his stomach. 
Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ari al-Thajjain, he had no hair over his breast. Ma siwa dharika ash'ara dhira'in. He had hair on his arms and some on his shoulders and the upper part of his chest. And he was, had large full hands and full palms and his feet were arched and he was sinewy and strong. Limbs were strong and he had full calves. His feet were very smooth, which was also because they were desert people and they walked a lot and people's feet would have a lot of um, roughness to them. But his feet were so smooth that water would pour off. And then when he walked, he walked softly. Because the Quran says, He walked like that. But he was quick paced as if he was walking on an incline. When he looked to somebody, he didn't just turn like this, he moved his entire body. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam to give full attention to that person. He looked more at the ground than he did uh, up. His, his glance was generally down because of the power of his glance. And then uh, most of his looking was mulahawa. When he looked at people, he didn't maintain his stare. He would look and then move away. So as he looked at people, he never fixed his focus on people uh, because uh, of, of the effect that that would have on the people. And then he said to him, describe for me how he spoke, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What was his... Uh, and he said, كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ مُتَوَاصِلُ الْأَحْزَانِ مُتَوَاصِلُ الْأَحْزَانِ means like the pure Arabic translation, he was always grief-stricken. But the ulama who commented on that hadith have said that that does not mean that he was depressed. What that means is that if you looked at him, like if you saw him in the mosque, if you saw him in the mosque and you looked at him, you would think that he was grief-stricken because the istighraq, his presence with his Lord was so intense that his face would have a sense of being completely absorbed in thought. And so people that would look at him would think that he had huzn. But it was actually shiddat al istighra. And that's why the ulama say the other hadith who kana da'im al bishara that he was always happy. The ulama say that when he was with al khaliq, kana da'im al ahzan. Lama kana ma al khalq, kana da'im al bishara. When he was with his creator, that he was in a state of deep contemplation. When he was with creation, he was happy. He smiled. He always looked at people and smiled and made them feel joyful. 